It is almost a marvel that in not more than the space of a week, the stubble-faced chameleon John Gomeshi has gone from being marquee all-star in this building and 160 NPR stations in the U.S. to Voldemort the unspeakable in both countries. From high stardom to a blot on the landscape since his Facebook day profundus two Sundays ago, where he confessed to being inventive in the bedroom. A phrase, whatever lawyers may make of it, will keep psychologists scurrying for years. The contradictions between the persona and the person, they are too serious to be listed as ironies, between the sensitive over-the-hill hipster tweeting his wish on International Women's Day that women should rule the world, and boasting, dear God, of having been a woman study student in college, to the flood of accusations of now being a serial harasser abuser, these contradictions are vast. Now, in the area of any criminal guilt, all this grand mess will be, as it should be, determined in the courts if he ever gets charged. But on the common sense plane, I don't think there can be any genuine reservations now that the host of Q made the most of Q and largely saw the program as a mattress for his ego and a great lever to allegedly mistreat and bully all around him. He bought and thought that he was a celebrity. He wanted to be in the same space as those he was interviewing, a petty celebrity god shooting, gliding above it all. It seems that in the grim lit chamber of his mind, that put him above the rules in regard for those he met or worked with. For the record, there is no more empty, mindless status than celebrity, but it has its force. It brought him to hosting the prestigious Giller Awards, which started with the magnificent Mordecai Richler. Now there's a downward slide. He also hosted Canada Reads, so why the epicure of indie bands and graduate of Moxie Fruvis should be front man for Canadian letters was and is a riddle to which only his tendentious fame is the key. He wore a progressive mask as a shield. The applique of being a big man on the scene from Canada Walk of Fame inaugurals to journalism school seminars, perhaps, no, almost certainly. That gave him an aura of influence that intimidated some and certainly made the long public silences over his conduct easier to rationalize. Those allegedly hurt by him must have their day. And now that the prime mover of these turmoils is underground and silent, there can be no genuine impediments to their doing so. I don't expect we'll hear a Hi there, Canada, any day soon. See, there are small mercies. For The National, I'm Rex Murphy.